Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I have a really great video today for you guys, and it's all about your wedding photography checklist. All the photos that you should be taking, or let me rephrase that, maybe your starting list, let's put it that way. Um, I brainstormed on this list for about two weeks to make sure that it's pretty exhaustive, and I believe it is. I think I have everything, but if I do miss something, let me know. You can click the link here on YouTube in the description, or fill out the form at the bottom of the post page on the website, and I will actually email you a copy of this form, or of, the, uh, of, of a, an actual form, an actual checklist that you can take with you the day of the wedding. You print it out, stick it in your pocket, and you'll have it with you all the time. So sign up for the email newsletter and you'll get already have a copy of that in your email today. Or if you haven't signed up, go ahead and do that and you will get it in the future. So let's start talking about that list. What are some of those photos? Well, we're going to go chronologically. Start with the beginning of the day and with the end of the day. <laughs> Pretty obvious, right? Chronologically. So first thing is the beginning of the day. We're starting out. Well, you need to talk to your bride, talk to the groom, and figure out what do they want. That's what I'm going to be saying through all of this. What do they want? These are suggested images that are things that you should be thinking about as you're shooting, as you're going through the day. So, first, before the wedding, do they want you to come to the salon? Do they want you to uh, do photos when they're uh, putting, getting their makeup done? Uh, what about the guys? Do you, do you want to be with the guys at the same time or at a different time? Or do you want to have to go with the brides early and then the men a little bit uh, later after that, you know, say an hour before the ceremony? You need to figure that timing out, especially if you have two photographers, that is an option for you. If you only have one, I suggest just staying with the bride and don't worry about the guys until afterwards, until after the ceremony, that is. So, First, girls getting ready, whatever that is. If it's just them, you know, mocking it up and kind of acting for that minute, you know what? That's great. That's perfect. That's exactly what you need to do. Get something. Um, I've done some photos in the past where the, you know, I just kind of waited until the bride had the dress most of the way up and then it was just the, the zip and, you know, a little bit of uh, jewelry put on and uh, the veil and that's it. And you know what? That's perfect too. It's just enough just to get a couple photos. Anything more than that probably won't get used. All right, so good place to start. Um, next, portraits of the bride. These are the, your most important photos of the day. A lot of people say that the kiss is the most important, and I disagree. I think the portraits of the bride are the most important ones of the day because she's the one that's going to be spending the money. She's the one that's going to be saying, yes, I want this photo, I want that one, I want that one. And if she has one photo that she absolutely loves from the beginning, especially early in the day, when her makeup's fresh, all that stuff, the better off you're going to be. So, uh, in my opinion, the number one photo that you need. Um, next, groups with the bride and bridesmaids. Obvious, need that photo, it's a really simple one. Um, hopefully, you're usually at the parents' house or at the hotel, so hopefully you'll have a nice scenic spot to be shooting, and so, um, you know, it's an obvious photo, it's an easy one. Uh, bride and her mom, bride and dad, bride with mom and dad, uh, bride with a maid of honor, bride with a maid of, or with uh, her siblings, and uh, maybe a large group with everyone in that I just talked about there. So, um, and of course, any other family that might be hanging around. If you're if they're at the parents' house, a lot of times there'll be other family there. So you'll definitely want to uh, consider shooting all of those people at the house or at the hotel, wherever it is especially if there's a chance where you might not get them later on in the day. Next on our list is the just before the ceremony and uh, kind of at the church kind of time frame. So uh, first thing, bride getting out of the limo. And that's a pretty popular photo. You want to try and do that whenever possible. It's just a couple of candidates, nothing major. Uh, as you, I, I don't like to spend a lot of time on those. They rarely get sold. And to be honest, they rarely end up in my albums either. So uh, just a couple of those. Same with before the wedding, uh, or like right before the ceremony, as the bride and her dad are standing out in the vestibule, not a lot of those get used or purchased or anything. So um, strong suggest just get a couple of those. You know, they might get put a couple in the album, one in the album, and that's usually about it. So next, 
Um, one, th uh, one thing I did want to mention, watch for kind of tender moments with Dad because he's going to be hanging around that whole time. So just look, look for that and watch out for that, uh, you know, whatever you can, especially if you're shooting candid photos. Uh, next, when the ceremony actually starts, first thing that's going to happen is the parents are going to come down the aisle. And so you want to definitely shoot photos of them coming in. You won't need to shoot them coming back out because you'll have them on the way in. So you actually get two chances at that. Um, let's see. Next is the bridesmaids coming down the aisle. Don't blind them. Don't, you know, shoot 50 photos with a flash on full power. You know, just try and get one photo, maximum two. Uh, get an even spot. Try and get the, shoot them in the same spot with the same zoom position, the same composition, the same everything every single time. And that's the, the best case scenario. Obviously, that's not always possible, but you do your best. Next, the bride and her dad are going to start coming down the aisle. Now, you are going to need to shoot a few of them coming down. You don't want to be on motor drive. You want to pick your shots. You want a far away shot, and then you want a little bit closer one, a little bit closer one. Then you duck into one of the pews if you're in a church, and then you let them walk by you, and then you shoot them going the rest of the way up the aisle. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to, the dad is going to give her away, so be prepared. There's going to be a number of photos that you're going to get where it's either dad and the groom hugging, um, probably the, 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 you know, the bride and her dad hugging, maybe mom will be involved in there. So a number of those things can happen, so be prepared and be ready for that shot and move up right behind them. Not too close, but... Uh, I typically use a 24 to 70 lens in that time frame, so it's a it's a good way to go. So you are relatively close. It's not like you're super far away, like if I had a 70 to 200 on or something like that. All right. So uh, dad giving away bride. That's the next one. Important parts of the ceremony. Uh, speakers. Um, I usually, if it's a Catholic mass, I usually don't shoot any of any of the people that are attending the event taking communion. Uh, I will take photos of the bride and groom taking communion, maybe the parents, and that's it. it it's really not a big deal. That's really a time for me to sit and relax because <laughs> I have kind of the first time you've been able to sit and relax during the whole wedding because you've been moving and running around for the last couple of hours. So that's kind of the first time where you can take five minutes and sit. So um, a couple. Uh, next thing, kiss. Got to have that kiss shot. Do your best to get it. Sometimes the... The, the pastor or the father will throw it in at an inopportune time. Nothing you can do about it. You just do your best. If you lose it, I have a tip for you in just a minute. Um, but uh, next thing, you got to get the rings. The rings are a real big thing to make sure that you try and get. Um, you can't really see. You can't. You can't really do see the vows in the pictures. So shoot a couple of photos while they're saying their vows. But then definitely the rings exchange, and obviously you're still in the aisle at this point. All right. Uh, last thing that I do as the bride and groom are coming up the aisle, I actually will stop them. And there's the big tip of the day. I stop them in the back of the aisle and I will have them stop and kiss in the back of the aisle, the back of the church, which they always love. And that's your backup plan in case you miss the kiss shot during the ceremony. So something to try. So now the bride and groom may have decided to have a receiving line which in my opinion is a big waste of time. If you have a big wedding, say 200 people that are attending the actual ceremony, they could be there for an hour. And in my opinion, I, I am just not a fan of them. I think it's a waste of time. We're much better off going and getting photos that you're gonna remember rather than you know this person, that person that you get introduced to or whatever that you're never gonna remember anyway. So um, that's my opinion, my jaded opinion after shooting a couple hundred of weddings and events. Anyway, um, so next thing, you're going to do photos at the altar. Those are big. You got to get those. You got to nail those right on the head. You can add a little flash, add a little fill flash. That's a good thing. Mix your fill flash with the available light. Get a good balance and you'll be good to go. Uh, you don't want to overpower that light. Just get a nice balance so that you can see both in the image. See a little bit of that background and a nice amount of light on the foreground. So start out with the bride, then the bride and groom, then bring in the parents that's the next thing you want to do i like to do the the parents and the family first because then they can leave 
All right, so start out with the bride's parents, then bring in the groom's parents and have both sets, then remove the bride's parents and just have the groom's parents in there, and then, then bring in any other family, any siblings, any aunts and uncles, grandparents, do all those big sides of the family kind of things. That's the first one that you wanna get out of the way. Then all those people can leave and they can head over to the reception and it makes it a little bit easier in my opinion, especially if you have older folks, older grandparents, um, I think it's a nice way to go. Then we bring in the groomsmen and the bridesmaids, do a bunch of combinations of them. Make sure you get your maid of honor and by himself with a bride and groom, as well as the, did I say maid of honor first? I don't remember. <laughs> the maid of honor with the bride and groom, as well as the best man with the bride and groom, and then both of them with the bride and groom. All right, so that's a, a nice combination there. All right, I got that, I got that. All right, next, um, outdoor photos. We gotta work on those outdoor photos. Um, find a nice location, a nice park. Hopefully the church is nice outside. Maybe the, maybe the reception area is nice outside. Do all kinds of combinations. Just don't overshoot. Have a game plan. Try and get four, five setups with everybody. Um, maybe a couple just the bride, a couple just the groom. Make sure you get those uh, shots with just the girls and the bridesmaids, just the guys and the groomsmen. Uh, just the, the groom and the best man because you didn't get that shot earlier in the day. So make sure you get that at this point after the ceremony, whether it's at the church, whether it's at the park, or whether it's at the, um, the reception afterwards. Next thing is the reception. This is where everybody's going to start getting lit. They're going to start having a couple of drinks, having some food. And so you got to be cognizant of what you're shooting, especially later on in the day. I've had a number of weddings where the bride or groom have been a little, have had a little bit too much to drink, we'll say, and so they don't like the photos later in the day. Their eyes start to get, you know, not as nice, and you know, makeup doesn't look good as as good as it did on the bride. So take that into consideration as you're shooting photos. Try and keep them any kind of formal photos to earlier in the reception, if at all possible. All right. First thing you're going to do is actually your introductions. Those are going to be the first photos that are going to happen during these formal ones, I should say. One photo, maybe two of everyone that gets introduced. Typically, you're going to have parents of each of the bride and groom, and then you're going to have all the pairings of the uh, bridesmaids and groomsmen. Should be super easy. Pick a nice spot, at, put your flash on. Um, you know, it's just a quick grab shot. It's just a quick candid. There really isn't anything super special. I don't think that you can do it unless you have an assistant to add some flash or like an off camera flash kind of a thing. All right. Uh, so introductions are first and then we are going to have the prayer and any speeches, any other things that are happening around that time. Uh, again, one or two photos of the prayer, a couple photos if they're laughing and having a good time during any speeches that are going on, that's enough. You don't want to overdo that. By this point, you should be almost done your photos. You probably already have five, 600 photos at this time if you're shooting digital. So, you know, even with this exhaustive list, you're still only looking at probably 800 photos. And that's about all I try and shoot. And if there's two photographers, I really want to try and limit that to less than a thousand, if at all possible. Sometimes we overshoot, it happens. You know, you, you get really good stuff and you keep going, but do your best to limit it if at all possible. All right. Uh, first dance, obvious, easy one. Uh, shoot some tighter ones, shoot some farther away. Make sure you get some background in the photos with say mom and dad in the background, uh, people, you know, outside of the dance floor, that kind of thing. It's a good one, an easy one. Uh, bride and dad dance, groom and mom dance, again, same thing, tight as well as far away. You want to try and get both. Um, next, cake and cake cutting. That's um, actually, uh, I'm going to save that for a minute. Um, garter toss, bouquet toss, as well as when they start putting, when they put the garter back on the girl who caught the bouquet. So make sure you get a bunch of those. I try and get those tight. If you have two photographers, I'll have one photographer shooting the bride tossing and another photographer shooting the girls catching and same with the guys so it, it makes for a nice setup with with both of those photos at the same time um, dancing and ring photos definitely going to have some kind of ring photos to show off their rings with their hands together uh, best thing you can do there is just google it find some nice images that you like and try and figure out what your style of photo is going to be uh, bring in some 
flowers, um, find a nice area where you want to shoot it. Probably going to need a macro lens to get a little bit closer. So definitely take that into consideration. Last thing of the day, of course, candids, you know, always need to be shooting candids throughout the entire day. But last thing, what I typically do is I end at the cake. That's usually the end of my day is, yep, we, we cut the cake, you know, we smash the cake in each other's face, we fed each other, whatever it is. Uh, that's when I start saying my goodbyes. I start saying, hey, is there anything else you want me to get? Did we miss anything? And so we try and get that um, that going. As soon as that cake's done, they've relaxed, they've cleaned up. That's that last step. So after 15 years of shooting weddings, this is my pretty exhaustive list or my kind of my starting point for what I'm going to be shooting. You definitely, definitely, definitely need to go to the bride and say, look, I need a list of photos. I'll need a list of people that you want photos of. Um, one thing that I stopped shooting a long time ago was table shots. I think they're the biggest waste of time. Nobody ever buys them. They never go in the album. They're horrible photos. They look terrible. The people in the background, uh, there's a million reasons not to shoot table shots. So I always stay away from them anymore. Um, uh, so st stay away. So uh, questions, comments, concerns, I love to hear them. I do have this list on the website. If you click the link right down underneath the description on here on YouTube, you will be able to head over and sign up for the email list and I will send that out. It will already be attached to the email list. So uh, you can, for those that are already on the email list, you'll already have a copy of that. So um, if you have any questions or anything, I'd love to hear them. In the meantime, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Keep shooting. Thanks guys. See ya.